Welcome to the Arts to Hearts podcast, a show where we take a peek into the hearts and lives of our favorite artists. From running a creative business and practice to mindset, we talk about everything that goes behind into making a life and a career that you adore as an artist. Think of this as your happy hour with your favorite artist in your studio. Hear them share the messy and the wonderful side of creating and living a creative heartfelt life within and outside our studios. As you tune in, be ready to be inspired and encouraged. I'm your host Charuka Rora, an artist, designer, entrepreneur, and founder of Arts to Hearts Project. Thank you so much for being here. Let's jump right in. Before we dig into this episode, I quickly wanted to remind you about a new call for art entries. The theme for this open call is Dreamland, and this online exhibit will be curated by none other than A. Katerina Eskapova, curator, artist, and founder of Create Magazine and Art Films. and definitely it's not a new fact that you know how much i love her the deadline to submit for this open call is september 8 2021 selected participants will be a part of an online exhibition hosted on www.artstohatsproject.com a few artists will be a part of a special podcast with me charuka rora and katerina A few selected participants will also be featured on Create Magazine's Instagram account with a reach over 180k followers. So you guys, this is so much. I mean, there's so much visibility that we've tried to put in this opportunity and I'm sure if you know Create Magazine and the work that they're doing, you would know how much this this sounds, how good this sounds. So you can find all the details and submit on www.arts2heartsproject.com/submit or find the link in the description below. And if you still don't know about Cat, well, you can listen to the promo of this open call published on the podcast, and you can also actually should check out the interview I had with Cat, uh, and where she spoke about community expansion, business, entrepreneurship, and everything else. The episode with Cat. Uh, is episode number five. You can go check it out. So, if you're a dreamer like me and Cat, and your work resonates with this theme of be of a dreamland, don't miss this opportunity. You can go submit again www.artstohasproject.com/submit, and we hope to see your submissions. Uh, please reach out to us uh, on Instagram at artstohasproject or. If you want to reach out to me, you can find me on Instagram at uh, Charuka Rora. If for any queries and questions that you have, I can't wait to see your work. Thank you. Bye. Hey, you guys! Welcome back to the Arts to Hearts podcast. I'm your host Charuka Rora, and you're back with me on your favorite podcast, Arts to Hearts podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, and I am so excited to be. you know recording this episode and generally i would you know just uh talk a bit of, with my guests in the beginning before the recording but i decided to skip that part today and just you know hit record so that you get the best of what we get it's no other than my favorite uh color snacks slash volta welcome to the podcast volta thank you so much charuka for having me i'm so honored to be on your podcast Thank you for coming. It has been quite a manifestation and quite an email to have you, but we have you here finally. Finally, especially this. Oh, I forgot to mention this is also Walter is also like a on on demand guest, <laughs> and I'm so excited because uh, because of the on demand, I had to push myself and I had to check in with Walter with where she was. all these months and i'm so glad i did that so that we made this possible so thanks to you guys who requested us to bring walter on the podcast and for walter for finally being here uh walter has recently launched her book she's just come from her we are just day before yesterday i saw her amazing launch party on instagram and we were just speaking about that and is even as now i can see the donut balloon uh the balloons and the leds and the lights in her studio so i i think that's the studio uh, yes. because she she has you have a home studio now right yes i do i'm so so grateful that i finally get to have like my own space where i can decorate it however i want 
and and you're so right these balloons were at the party but i'm like Hi. i'm just gonna like re like continue living the celebration for as long as they're like inflated <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, Volta. I of course I'm we would be talking so much more. But uh just for the sake of it, can you introduce yourself and who you are? Yes, absolutely. So I'm Volta Voloshin Smith. I'm a watercolor illustrator and animation artist. Um I specialize in food illustration. I just love food, just speaks to my soul and on a such deep level. Um and along with that, I also do watercolor workshops um for corporate clients and I also do live painting events. Um so yeah, that's that's pr pretty much me in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, Volta. Um here at Arts to Hearts, generally my format is where I would ask where the artist comes from, you know, just digging in, um, in, you know, how your life has been. And I really want to touch on that part and understand that how you were, I know that you were not, you, uh, you moved to the US. Uh, let's start from where you were born mm -hmm. and how, how was it growing up for you? Yes. So I really love this question. I'm originally from Moldova. Uh, it's a small country in Eastern Europe. Um, it's located between U Ukraine and Romania. Uh, and let's see, I was about 14 years old when my parents and I immigrated to the United States. And uh, growing up, I, I was always into drawing. Like I loved art as like as, as a little kid. Um, I was heavily influenced by uh, this cartoon called Sailor Moon, because um, it was like a watercolor, like so colorful, like there were cats, there were like wings, there were women, like strong women. <laughs> it was it was just such a fond, like fond memory of me being influenced by that, that inspired me to start drawing. And um, I kind of have always carry that love for art ever since I was little, um, even if I didn't always pursue it. So um, like once I moved to the States and in school and in college, I was mostly trying to, you know, pursue marketing and business, kind of have more of a secure career path. Um, but I always knew, I always knew I was an artist at heart. And it was just, just a, like three or four years ago when, I finally decided to, you know, just give this art thing a shot because it was just such an important part of me that I kind of have hidden for, for a while. I'm so glad that you did that because the amount of, the amount of joy that you were and you spread is just so amazing. I, I am a big time food lover. I love, I love food and it is, it feels so great to see uh, someone who also loves food and art. And I just love how beautifully you've integrated the two. Um, you've really done it so well. And, and you truly embody that. That is such, such an inspiring thing. Okay. You also mentioned that, uh, you were, you straight away did not get into the arts. Let's talk about what you did instead. Yeah. And I also wanted to thank you for all your kind words uh, about my work. Um, but let's see. So I, uh, you know, in high school, I was kind of trying to figure out, well, what should I do in college? And um, having immigrant parents, it, they were kind of like trying to, you know, nudge me towards a career path that was more secure because we came from a country where there's a lot of just a lot of struggle in terms of like trying to make a living of any kind. So, um, I, I know that, you know, they meant like the, for me to pursue like the best path. Um, and, and I'm really grateful that I did, um, study business and marketing in college because that knowledge I can still apply today, like in running my own art business. Um, so I think it, even though like I, I took a bit of a detour, uh, to be on this art path, I am still grateful because not, none, none of the experiences or um, the knowledge that I learned has been wasted because I'm still able to apply that today. Amazing. Let's talk about how did the art and food happen? Okay, first tell me, like, how, yeah. like, are you, like, this passion for food that you have, before you had Colors Night, like uh, you were doing this. How has your relationship with food been? And um, 
I just want to talk about how a food lover you are. <laughs> Again, excellent question, Taruka. I love it. So I, um, you know, during like this past like 20, 20 year, um, because of the times that we're in, I had a lot of time to like reflect on why do I love food so much? What is like drawing me to it? And I finally realized that as a kid, um, so so we lived in Moldova, but my grandparents, a set of my grandparents lived in Ukraine. So I would go visit uh, one of my grandmothers in the Ukraine over the summers. And she had these like beautiful gardens, always like filled with all kinds of like fruits and veggies. I mean, it was like the freshest produce, uh, like freshest kinds of food you could ever possibly like imagine. And thinking back on those like fond memories, um, that is where my love for food. And especially like, I just love going to the farmer's market and like looking at veggies, like that makes me so happy. <laughs> I like, if I, if I feel sad, like I'll just go to a grocery store or a farmer's market to like cheer myself up because I think like, um, those early memories of just being able to, you know, have the tactile experience yeah. of, um, harvesting those like berries and strawberries and whatnot. And, um, just kind of like they, they have such a special place in my heart. And as a result of that connection, I'm just uh, like immediately drawn to food that is like colorful, vibrant, um, you know, just kind of like a feast for my eyes. Like anytime I go anywhere, I first like have to take a moment and like look at this like plate in front of me because it's so gorgeous. And I'm like, I want to paint everything. <laughs> Amazing. And now that you're saying, you know, uh, for me, like I'm someone who finds like as much as I don't want to eat at this point, but I love food. And a lot of time I find comfort in food and comfort. I mean, mm -hmm. especially at times of discomfort and Mm, I love when you're saying that the tactile experience of food and like for me um, in the past uh, three months, uh, ever since my mom's passing, um, cooking became something that um, because art was still work and I just wanted to do something which was still with my hands. But, you know, it just a, it provided good. It is the joy it gives you when either someone really feeds you with good intentions or when you feel yourself with good intentions. And I think food yeah. is such an important part of our life. And we sometimes really underestimate that or we like, like me overestimate it. Let's talk about your journey of combining art and food. And I'm sure it's not, it must have not been an easy one because it's, you know, we all come with our baggage of, what people expect, what mm -hmm. we want to be, how we will be perceived and all of those things. Let's talk your journey about, yeah. did you think when you started like getting into illustration and did you think that you, you would like combine food and art? Yeah, no, I, I, when I started, um, when I finally decided to like, okay, I'm going to quit my full-time job and, and do like, you know, do, I did freelancing um, for a while to figure like to figure out what I was doing. Cause I, at that point, like I didn't go to art school. I didn't, I didn't know the difference between fine art and commercial art. Yeah. I didn't know any of the stuff. And also didn't know that people made uh, money with, by painting food because <laughs> I, I knew I loved it, but then, um, but I had no, I, I thought, Oh, well, this is not, I mean, I've never really seen like food in that way represented, you know, like in, art galleries. I mean, sure you have like those like fancy still yeah. lives, but you know, it wasn't like my style of art. So I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but I just, I, I knew like I, I wanted to keep at it and I was just trying a bunch of different things. And I, I will say like what especially kind of helped guide me towards like food illustration um, was really just discovering other artists that were pursuing this path too. So um, one of my favorite illustrators is Wendy McNaughton, and she um, has done illustrations for like the New York Times. And a lot of her stuff is food. Mm -hmm. And I think like when I saw like just an example of someone else kind of 
you know, pursuing that kind of like a playful, like watercolor type of food illustration style, I was like, wow, that's, that's so cool. Like this is possible. Like I, I, I felt immediately like less alone. I think, I think like just seeing someone else, um, just having that evidence that it's possible Possibly. kind of helps us or, or gives us a little bit of permission to be like, you know what, like it, they, they did it. Yeah. Why, why couldn't it happen for me too? Yeah, that's true. That I that really is true because that gives us so much inspiration and courage that and I, I think it's also sometimes when we when we feel like what someone else is doing and we wanted to be that too, it's quite an indication that this is something that we should definitely try. I remember mm-hmm. we spoke, I think mm-hmm. a, a year ago, um we I I I know you and I both were at a very different place in our life. And today I I see I've seen you bring so many things to life that at that point were just ideas. Let's talk about um, your shifts and things that you've been able to make happen, which also definitely includes your book, which I know that you are very excited. I'm very excited about and I want to talk about all of that because um, I remember and I also because I'm sharing this because a lot of times people see the bright side. People see, oh, you know, you've Mm -hmm. launched this, you've you have a book, uh, you're doing this, or, you know, you have a platform or all of that. But there are those days behind that, that, you know, where we felt that we were too far away from that, or that it even Mm -hmm. felt if that would be possible, or it would be something that that just still remains in our dreams. Let's talk about um, how did your book start? And yeah, your journey till here. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so the book came unexpectedly. Um, well, it was unexpected at the time. But when I look back, like even three or four years ago, I see that I like four years ago, I actually started, I, I took those steps that led me to be discovered by my publisher. Um, so the way the book came about is four years ago, I created a class on Skillshare. And uh, Skillshare is like this awesome platform, like a Netflix for for like any kinds of like classes you want to learn. And uh, at the time I was just starting out my journey and I was like, um, I knew I had a passion for teaching and and I saw some of the other artists that I admired had classes on there. And I was like, well, why not? Like I could I could make a class on something fun. And and of course it was like. Um, I don't, I think like 12 ways to paint watercolor ice cream. Like I literally researched all the ice cream types out there and I was like, this is fun. Like I want to paint this and I maybe like in the process, I can also, um, teach it to someone else. So, um, even though like at the time I was like severely depressed, like that, that is something that not a lot of people knew at the time I was going through like just like a very difficult season. Um, but Skillshare had um, a sort of like a, a monthly, like a challenge to create a class within um, 30 days. So like a month t- time frame. Um, and because I signed up for it and I kind of had that uh, like little bit of accountability, you know, a little bit of a push, I was like, okay, well, like, I don't feel like showing up today, but I said I'd do it. Like I promised myself I would finish it. So I would just, you know, I just showed up in any, like the most imperfect way that I could. Um, And then, you know, fast forward, like four years later, (laughs) my publisher um, sends me an email and they're like, hey, we saw your class on Skillshare about ice creams. And, and, you know, we were wondering if you wanted to write a book on like how to paint foods with watercolor. And honestly, I, I was like, but that class is is so old and like looking back on it, it's I'm cringing a little bit <laughs> because <laughs> I've I like to think I've improved since then. So I'm like, wow, you you thought that was <laughs> that was a good yeah, enough yeah, like, I idea. Like, you so, like that. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. I'm like, but now. I can show you some other stuff. Like, yeah, more recent <laughs> stuff. I promise it's like way better. <laughs> and but you know, like I'm sharing all this to say that um, yeah. if you're an artist, like wanting to teach or share, like you don't have you, there will never be 
a perfect moment. Like yeah. there, you'll never be a hundred percent ready, but just showing up in the most like imperfect way that you can and, um, genuinely showing up to like share your heart with the world. Um, it, you know, you'll never, you just never know who's going to stumble upon what you created out there and then reach out to you for like a larger opportunity, like writing a book, for example. Yeah. That is amazing. And you know, sometimes like a lot of times that it was just, okay, I, let me ask this question. Was your Skillshare class very successful on Skillshare? I, it was uh, during the summertime. Okay. So I noticed uh, over the years, like it would always kind of um, get a lot of views and like students enrollment during the summer because it was like such a summer type yeah. of class. Um, but I will say I created that in October and, and like, you know, it had so many more months yeah, until like it got to be summer. And for, for a long time, I was like, well, I just, I just wanted to make, you know, I wanted to it to be a fun subject matter, even if it wasn't like quote unquote in season. Yeah. Um, but it's still like eventually kind of caught up and now I'm definitely seeing like it's mo most popular in the summertime. <laughs> Amazing. Because, you know, sometimes some things happen like you know, when we pick up a project that we feel called for or feel like, you know, we're trying or we want to do. And the thought that, oh, you know, you know, it did not perform well. Sometimes we don't know what's working behind the wheels of what just just what we are expecting. Sometimes uh, an email that you write, a newsletter that you sent may not be uh, seen by so many people that um, matter to you, but it may be seen by someone you did not expect a class that may have not performed like in the sense of numbers, in sense of popularity, mm -hmm. but maybe yeah. a publisher finds you through that. I mean, sometimes um, it's also just about expect, uh, had you not taken that experiment and just because recording a class is a lot of work. I'm sure it's, it is a yeah. lot of work. Yeah. And <laughs> Just having that patience and it, it was four years, four years, uh, four years later, some from somewhere that you would least expect and something mm -hmm. showed up and it just, it, it is such a good reminder with your story that sometimes we should just do something because we want to do and then forget about it because if it's meant to be something's coming yeah. our way, it's going to come its our way irrespectively. Yeah. Oh, I love that um, way of thinking so much. And, and like you mentioned, you know, an experiment, cause it really was like, especially at that time where I, I, I had no really, I didn't know what my path would look like or what direction, like I knew I loved foods and, but I also was painting like other things on the side. Um, but I, I treated, honestly, everything is an experiment and, I said yes to a lot of things um, just to see like, well, what, it, what is it this yeah. like? I even like, you know, painted a mural for someone. And while that was fun, I realized, well, I, I like Texas summer is just brutal. So I like, I cannot do this outside <laughs> physically, yeah. not for me. Um, yeah. So that's why, you know, but, but had I not, you know, tried it out um, at least once, you know what it was like, yeah. I would have never known. I would have always wondered like, oh, you know, maybe I should do murals or like should focus on that. And, you know, it's just, yeah. you have to try, I think a couple of different things just to see like what speaks to your heart, what feels like super aligned. And, and even with the book, I had previously never written a book before. Um, I've, I've taught watercolor techniques and, and things, but I've never taught it in a format where like I write out the instructions in that way. Um, and honestly, like the whole process, I've never felt more aligned with anything I've ever done before. Like writing a book was wow. such a dream come true. And it was just like, every day like that I got to work on it I would just like I would like grin like like a silly person like I just like sit and like smile to myself and be like oh my gosh I'm writing a book <laughs> and honestly oh my like God, that's I, so it amazing was... <laughs> I can see that joy was... uh, right in front of me right now and I can see that joy oh. I've been seeing that joy every time you share about the book uh, you've you've also shared a lot of your journey throughout on Instagram so of course let's also of course when we're talking about the good sides let's also talk about the hard mm -hmm. sides because 
that is what keeps all of us grounded and that is also the hard work that goes behind the good work that we see today mm-hmm. um yeah. i'm sure from the year that in in between these four years how has your journey been yeah. um how how was it for you when you were painting these foods how did you figure out that your visibility when it came to your work i know that you you do this very fun thing on instagram which is the cocktail hour yes what a color happy, happy hour. hour yeah yeah so let's talk about how let's talk about how how were the ways that you integrated your work your passion for food mm-hmm. and your passion for art and how that yeah. how you instilled into your practice i i guess I'll, i'll go back to like the examples of i was trying to find um so once i saw an example of like an artist you know pursuing their art career with food illustration i was like okay so this is possible but i need to figure out a way of how i could make this work for myself and eventually through like a lot of trial and error and honestly uh a, a lot of like very um low performing months and you know the the like struggles at the beginning was um yeah like what kept me going was honestly just believing that i have something to offer of value yeah. and i just need to like show up in front of the right people <laughs> um and the way i kind of um started to think about what what switched for me was uh realizing that what i have um what i what i can create can produce value for another brand and, and that's in terms of like you know pursuing like commercial type of like path where my watercolor illustrations are used by other companies to either like tell their brand message or some something on social media um so i just kind of switched that mindset of like okay i i really want to make an income from my art um and i and i still have you know my own art practice that's more private like that satisfies like my yeah. my art calling uh but i wanted to make this you know kind of put on my business thinking hat on <laughs> and and figure out okay so i um I, i love food there's a lot of like food brands out there um especially like restaurants you know or cocktail um brands and like yeah all all those things and i was just trying to find a way um look at their um current messaging and see well like is there a way that i could enhance what they're saying with watercolors yeah and a lot of times like the pitching to them for example like i i'll say like my my most successful example has been uh, my favorite local taco brand in in texas um it's called velvet taco and i've been a fan of theirs since like 10 years ago when they <laughs> when they opened up and and right now they have like over 20 locations in the us wow. so they they've grown like in a huge way and throughout the years i've like i always wanted to work with them but i i didn't know the exact the capacity that it would you know it would happen and eventually i kind of find found my way to do like those you know combine food illustrations and animations and make gifts. Yeah. And so I started like pitching pitching those to brands because there's a lot of like um you know positive things that can come out of it of using that for your social media. Um and so just kind of trying to to think of like well what what would make this brand or company look like Uh, how how can they tell tell their own story a little better and i'm like well i can make some fun gifts for you guys and you can use them and then your audience can use them <laughs> amazing and so that was kind of how i how i was able to combine you know the art and the business side um and just just basically really like the pivoting point came came down to when i Um I was working with a coach and she said, you know, your art has value. Um you just got to think of like just think outside of the box of how you can provide that value to another company. Yeah, that's such a great question actually. I know for a fact that it takes it takes so much courage to get over these fears and ask ourselves these questions because there are and this is actually something and why I really wanted to have you. is because um we've had a very like 
we've had sculptors, artists, fine artists and everything. But we all de- get to decide of what kind of artist we want to be, in what capacity mm-hmm. we want to be and what our work could be about and how it could work. The good thing, like what I always try, even with the podcast, is that to even show myself and to show others who are listening to this episode, to this podcast, that, you know, a fine artist can also um, can also find a way to, you know, branch out to maybe, um, or like for someone like me, you know, I started as a digital artist and I don't know, I found, I fell in this web where I love what I do. I absolutely love what I do right now, but not that I don't love what I did then also. But you know, there are these cases that you are put in and what you are doing is not something like, you know, niching down yourself to food and art. I'm not, I'm sure it's not easy. It would have taken so many, so many, like you would have had to shed so many of your own fears and limitations that we set for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like what, what thoughts did come to your mind when you thought like you would be, you would just not be a watercolor or illustration artist. You'll be a food mm-hmm. illustration artist, which is even yeah. niching down. Oh, I love this question so much because it, it's honestly a constant struggle because like as, as artists, like we want to try um, to do different things, you know, explore, experiment. Um, but I just had to kind of train myself to say yes to opportunities that aligned with like my, my bigger vision. But at the same time, also making time for myself to do the type of art that I don't have to show anyone, like something that just like fulfills me as a person, as an artist. Um, but it, it is it is important, though, to schedule that time in because I, I have found that anytime I slip up and like don't do it, I just get a little bit cranky <laughs> and a little grumpy. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's when I know that, OK, I need to I need to feed the little like little inner child Volta, I need to feed her some art for the soul that isn't about getting a client or, you know, getting in front of someone. Um, but, but I will say it was definitely like a conscious decision and it is challenging um, only because like, like I said, we, we want to do a lot of different things. Um, but what I have found that uh, focusing on one thing can usually usually produce like the best results as far as like outcome and um and and that's not to say that you know later down the road like I won't like do some other type of illustration but for this season in time like I wanted to really specifically focus on that and really get strong in this in this particular like niche um before I switch to something else yeah, which is a very, very good point. Knowing and allowing ourselves that where we are today, we just don't have to be that. We can always expand. Mm-hmm. Our ideas can always mm-hmm. expand. Our identities can always expand. And, you yeah. know, whenever I see you, uh, and I'm just sharing this one of my own fears because this is what I love to do here, uh, to share yeah. everything that I am afraid of so that I let it out. but. You know, mm-hmm. and I, this is a question I, I want to know, how did you deal with it? Because, you know, as artists, we are all, a lot of times put on to this pressure of um, being serious. You know, what if a lot of us have this fear? To, if our work is not serious enough, we wouldn't be taken seriously enough. Or we would just generally mm-hmm. not being taken, not being taken seriously mm-hmm. enough. So mm-hmm. did you have that fear first? And if you did, yes. how did you overcome that? Yeah, uh, Charuka, it's the best. You have the best questions. Um, so absolutely, and actually, I remember many times. So I would do these art fairs where I'd go, like you know, sell my art, and of course, they would be like art prints or original works of food, and people would would walk by and they said, "Oh, that's cute," and at a point, I was like, "Am I?" Like, how do I feel about the word cute? Because at the time, like, I really wanted to be, you know, taking seriously, like you mentioned, it's like, well, this is my profession. I'm not just someone making cute things, you know, may, hoping if it were, you know, I'm, I'm like intentional about these cute things. Um, but I, I would say, like, eventually, I just, 
uh, through a lot of uh, morning pages and writing just affirmations and kind of like feeling secure in my own, like what I, the, the art that I create is me. And if that's, that's how people are responding to it, you know, that's, that's their interpretation because I know like, even though, um, what I paint is colorful and very much like, you know, cute, maybe like for, even for like children's books or like nursery rooms, all that stuff. It's like, so what, like, this is, this is me on a plate. Like that's the stuff that I want to express. And, um, I no longer like have a problem with the word cute, um, because I know that I, what, what I can provide has value. Um, it, it, you know, a cute painting can make someone's day. Like if they look at yeah. it, they can feel, you know, a little bit more joyful. Yeah. Um, so I'm just kind of learning to, um, through a lot of like self-reflection and writing, just to reframe that concept of like, um, I am an, I am a serious artist and, yeah, I make colorful and cute things. So I love what? this answer. <laughs> I just love this answer because the answer to everything that you, the key to everything that you said, said is acceptance. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes it's, the problem is not what people say. The problem is what we perceive with what they say. Uh, because cute, your work is wonderful, colorful, cute, happy, everything. And I mean all of that with best intentions. Because sometimes yeah. what we think that because we're saying all these good things and I'm I'm saying this for myself also because when I just started, like when I, I was just starting out, when I thought I wanted to be an artist, I only knew like I was, a, I was a graphic branding person. So digital art was easy for me. So I would make these prints. I was always into prints, a lot in prints. But I just mm-hmm. began with these very cute, cute or like these things. And I remember... Uh, when I used to make these prints, I would like, you know, someone, someone said to me, like, you're not an artist because you're an illustrator. And that stuck to me for so long. And mm-hmm. it, it wasn't th- because honestly, I just wanted to be called an artist as simple as that. I just yeah. wanted the, to hold that space because I felt like one, I wanted to be called one. And I did not want to yeah. be disregarded for, for the work that I'm doing. And of course, my work evolved where I am even till today. I mean, um, people will call you, you know, you're a mixed media artist. Like at the end of the day, we're all artists, whatever path we yes. choose. And it the, yes. the key to all of this was our own self-acceptance that you are an artist and you are an illustrator. You are an artist who mm-hmm. illustrates. You are an artist mm-hmm. who makes these animations, who loves food and integrates that. And you do beautiful work, which sends so much happiness into the world. I mean, um, it shows on your face more than anything else. Thank you so much, Jaruka. I, I, that's such a good, like, I, I loved how you encapsulated the whole thing in, into the word acceptance, because really, it, it does come down to that. And it's like, if we are accepting of who we are, um, then no matter that whatever people can say, like, that's, that's their own interpretation, but we are like, we have in ourselves, like we know in our heart who we are. And that's, that's all that matters really at the end of the day. Love that. Amazing. Walter. I can't believe it's been (laughs) so long that we've been talking. I just feel like we just started. And Oh my gosh. Because we are on, I, I would have call like we could chat for more hours, but we have to do that another time. I am so grateful for, your time and everything you shared but before i just want to quickly jump to our my favorite part of the episode which is the rapid fire which is something i love to do because it just gives me a more like it just shows a little bit more of who you are as a person as an artist just so are you ready okay let's do it (laughs) perfect so you have to be quick i'll ask you a set of questions give me anything that comes to your Mm -hmm. mind okay one thing you want to convey through your work in the arts? Food. <laughs> Happiness. <laughs> what's, what's that one word that describes you the best? Um, joyful. Uh, if, you can, if you could have a studio anywhere in the world, where would it be? It would be uh, in um, Valparaiso, Chile. Wow, where is this? 
in in Chile, it's uh, it's a small like um, coastal town. It's wow. such a beautiful. I visited many like over ten years ago, um, but it's that experience just still stuck with me. And I think it would be so inspiring to to live on on the coast of and see the sea and like make all kinds of fun art. <laughs> Oh, amazing. I have to check it out. Your biggest source of inspiration? Food. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it really is because like food brings people together and there's just like so much. It's it's like the beauty of like nourishment for your, your stomach, your soul, your like community building, all of it. I just think food is so powerful. Uh, okay. Your, who is your favorite women artist and why? I'm just going to go ahead because like... Ekaterina Popova jumped the, was the first like that jumped to my my mind and you know I know you we are both huge fans of her. Um, I just I I I love that she's um, not only like just a talented and generous and kind person, but also such an expander for the community oh. of artists. Like what she's doing, she's like literally changing the our yeah. lives. She's ch- yeah. she's changed my life in, in so many ways and. And I just am so honored to to know her. Same here. I think um, it is truly an honor. And in the past, in the past two years, I think we we all started together, and we can see. I mean, I can see that change in you. I can see how much you have grown, and how much our mindsets have evolved. Because one positive mm-hmm. action can can go such a long way, such a long way. And yeah. I'm so grateful yeah. that Cat is curating our new call for art and. I was so excited because um, I literally had to like, because in the past two years, we've all talked about our dreams and like, I see like you making come, like you made that come true for yourself and so many others. And a lot of that has to do with Kat. And I'm just Mm -hmm. so excited that I've got this opportunity that uh, in another form, but I'm able to translate that experience into something else. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I will definitely be applying for that call to art. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. My next question. Uh, uh-huh. Who's your go-to person when you're in trouble or you need advice? Definitely my husband. Uh, he's been such a huge um, source of support and encouragement. Yeah. And honestly, like I dedicated the book to him oh, because wow. he was the first person, he was the first person to believe in, in me before I even yeah. I even, you know, got to where, like, yeah, like he saw the potential and was like, you, you can do this, you can do this. And it's, you know, made all the difference, That's like so having nice. his support. And I love the way he shows up with you for the cocktail hour, happy hour. Yeah. And then how, yeah. how he's been there with you for everything. I mean, it is, it is truly commendable. And I'm so, it is, it just Thank brings you. me so much joy to see you, um, see him to be such a good part uh, of your journey. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. If you were to meet younger Walta today, what advice would you give her? Uh, I would probably tell her, just have faith in in your passion. Uh-huh. Just just keep keep putting in like the miles to making art even when when you don't see any results and you don't really even know what path to take, but just showing up in any small way oh love that matters <laughs> love that amazing my last question what advice would you like to give to artists women artists who are coming behind you i would say my number one advice would be to find a community that you can feel safe and empowered to ask questions and reach out for help um, because it's it's made all the difference for me to because prior to the art queens like I felt so alone and it was like a good three years of that yeah I can relate to that because <laughs> I just I, I and like I met some artists locally but I don't know it just yeah. wasn't the same kind of like friendly you know encouraging vibe so I think as soon as you can just find your community um that you just resonate with and you can 
feel very comfortable, you know, sharing your struggles, especially your struggles. Cause like, yeah, that's, that's, the hardest part. that's where it's at. like, yeah, we have to have each other's support, um, to keep showing up because life, life is hard. And, yeah. and when we have loving people around us, it, it gets just a little bit easier. And that's, that's absolutely true. And I truly, and definitely we all can vouch, vouch for how much a difference, um, a good community like Art Queens has made into our lives and yeah. has given all of us the purpose to give this back and ahead to others. So yeah, that's such a great advice. Walter, thank you so much. I can't believe we've been talking for so long. It just feels <laughs> uh, amazing. I just want to say a big thank yeah. you for coming here, for being so wonderful, warm and kind. I really appreciate and I really admire your journey so far, how you've built yourself. And not only because you've launched a book, but because of, I I have seen you, like I've seen you sharing all the joys and I could see, I could see that joy on your face. And it's, it's like, you know, when you see your, like you see your friends make their dreams come true. It's, it's been like that. Um, and it just makes me so, so happy to see you have that book in your hand to see you launch that party and do everything that you'll do ahead because I'm here and I'm rooting for you always. And oh. Arts to Arts is definitely here for you. So I just want to say a big, big congratulations, a big thank you for your inspiration and everything that you're doing. But before, mm-hmm. I just want to also say that, can you also share about where people can find your book, uh, if you're doing anything upcoming that people can find, where can people, like your new projects that you want to talk about or just the one that you have right now and where people can find you and support you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Taruka, thank you so much for having me. Honestly, such an honor to be on your podcast and um, sharing you know, my story with your community. I'm so, so grateful for this time together. Um, and let's see, people can find me on uh, Instagram. That's where I mostly hang out at. It's uh, at Colorsnack uh, or colorsnack.com is my website. Um, and I just, yeah, if anyone has any questions about watercolor stuff, like I'm your girl. I love helping out. I, I'll always like send you a resource or a link to something that's helpful. I just love um, helping people discover like their love for watercolors because I think it's such a wonderful medium. <laughs> love that. And can you also talk, uh, share where you, where people can buy your book? Yeah. Um, so my book is actually available wherever books are sold. So Amazon, Barnes and Nobles online, um, Walmart, Target, like all these things. Like uh, if you just search for watercolor snacks, um, there's like a, a bunch of million different ways um, to purchase the book. But Is it available internationally? Um I'm, I will have to double check on that. I want to say, I want to say the Kindle edition on Amazon can be purchased internationally. Amazing. Any which ways I will link both, um, all the links that you've mentioned that you'll give me so that Uh people who are international, who are based in the U S can still buy the book. And if you're not based in the U S and listening to this episode, you can buy the Kindle edition or if, if Walter gives me any other links, it'll be mentioned in the show notes. So absolutely amazing. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to have you again uh, with another book, another new achievement, another new, <laughs> I know many more. And I know that that will happen very soon. I just want to say a big thank you again. I hope to see you soon again. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye, Charuka. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. You can find all the details and links mentioned in the show notes of this episode available on www.arts2heartsproject.com. And if you like this episode, please don't forget to tag us in your stories and leave us a review here on iTunes or any of your favorite platforms. It really helps us to keep the show going. Thank you so much. I'm sending you lots of love and I can't wait to be back here soon again. Bye.